Hello and welcome to Kruttinger Puppets. I'm so excited to be part of the Virtually Maker Fair this year. Stick around because we're going to be making a really cool puppet today. All right, today we're going to be making a really fun puppet that's simple to make at home using minimal materials. Before we jump into those materials, let me kind of show you what one example of what it could end up being. Our, the one we're going to make today is going to look a lot like this. It's a pretty simple, really cute, fun little puppet. I made this one just a couple days ago, and he is really zany small pupils which makes them really fun but you can even see behind me it's easy to change the way the character looks just by adding all types of different features or even using different colors right here we have a funny red one who has these cool eyelids and this is uh one i made a while ago and this one i decided to make arms um, I, we're not going to be making the arms today because we don't have a lot of time and you don't even really need arms to really have a lot of fun with this type of puppet. Now, and if you want to learn how to make the arms, I made a whole video on how to make arms for a puppet that I'll put in the link down below too. Now, let's jump right into the materials. Today, I am going to be making another blue snoof. That's what I call these little guys. Now, what you're going to need is about a 16 inch square of fabric. Now it doesn't have to be fur. However, I think fur makes these guys look so fun and playful and cute. Now, the next thing you're gonna need is about six inches, about a six inch square of felt or some other sort of fabric, okay? And that's gonna be for inside of the mouth. That's all you really need for the fabric. Of course, you're gonna need uh, a needle and thread, as well as some sort of plastic for the mouth. I like to use a container, a bin container, but you could easily use craft foam or cardboard. What I like about this is that they, it tends to last a long time. And some people ask too, can you, what about the rest of the bin? You can use the rest of the bin too. I already used the bin for some of these other puppets. So what I have left is this lid, which we'll get into that later. But the next thing you're going to need is the pattern for your puppet. Now, if you go to KrutingerPuppets.com, you can download the pattern we're going to be using today absolutely free. And what I, it, uh, I call this uh, my snoof pattern, okay? It comes uh, like this, and then it says to just draw and extend about five inches longer. That makes it cover more of your arm. It makes it a little bit more comfy. And there's two pieces. There's that body piece and the mouth piece. We'll get to this a little later. This is what we're going to use on that red fabric. But for right now, what I want to do is trace this out. Let me switch you guys to the top view here so it's a little easier to see. So what we're gonna do is trace this up. But before you start drawing on this fur, here's what I want you to do. Take a look at the other side of the fur. One thing you'll notice is some furs, I should say most furs, kind of have a, a direction that the fur is flowing in. I like to try to make sure that is going down naturally i can tell that this is the actual edge of the fabric so yeah so this fur goes down this way so i'm going to have my fur pointing down when i trace this pattern okay now let me see here what i'm going to use to trace it is a sharpie okay so i have my pattern and i have my sharpie and here's a little tip that can save you a lot of sewing Sometimes, if you only have a small piece of fabric, you can actually cut out two of this pattern like that. But to save a lot of sewing, what you can actually do is just trace it on the fold. That'll save you half the time. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So what I'm going to do is quickly trace this pattern. Whoops. Just like this. And there's a little notch in the pattern here. I like to put that little notch there. So that way, it'll make it easier to put the mouth plate in later. 
And now, like I said, all we have to do is mirror the pattern on that side, and that'll save us a lot of time on sewing, especially if you're new to sewing. It'll make it a lot easier. So I'm just going to stop there, mark my little notch, come all the way up like this. And I'll extend this notch, just like that. Now, now what we have to do is cut this out. If you're going to be sewing this on a sewing machine, you're going to want to add a little bit of seam allowance. Okay, I usually say about an, a half inch is what I like to do. But in this case today, we're going to be hand sewing it. So we're going to cut right on the line. So I'm going to cut all the way around this puppet like that but i'm not going to cut this line because otherwise i'd have to sew it right back together again anyway now there's a couple ways you can cut this out it's possible to do it with scissors okay and it's and here's what you do you have to do very you can't just cut this the the fur like this like you would a regular fabric and the reason for that is because you'll change the length of the fur that's close to that seam. So what you wanna do is this. If you're gonna use scissors, you do very tiny, tiny little cuts. And you just make sure you're cutting the backing and not cutting the fur pieces underneath. Another way to do it, if you have parents helping you, is to use an X-Acto blade. And you use the X-Acto blade from the back of the fur. You never want to cut on this side. You're, just, you're never going to be able to find those lines. But uh, the razor blade is a little faster. But again, make sure that you have help if you are using the razor blade. So let me quickly cut this out so we can move on to the next step. Like I said, I'm not going to go all the way down there. Just like that. Hope you guys are enjoying this virtually Maker Faire today. I'm so excited to be a part of it. I've gone to a couple Maker Faires before. Just this past year, I had a lot of fun at the Rochester Maker Faire and was able to meet a lot of really cool makers and all kinds of cool things. I actually have a video on my YouTube channel about my experience at Maker Faire. You can check that out. You can see some of the people I, I met and some of the cool things I was able to do at my stand. I'm excited to one day go back to an in-person Maker Faire. But just like that. So I have my entire pattern cut out. Now what I'm gonna do is teach you some basic sewing techniques, okay? But before we get to the basic sewing techniques, I'm gonna give you the biggest tip that's gonna make your sewing so much easier, okay? And that is to use pins. So watch this, I'm gonna fold it over. And what I'm gonna do is use some pins. Don't underestimate what an amazing tool the pins are. If you're drawing, pins are almost like doing a sketch before you use the marker or before you go in with paint. You wanna make sure it all lines up and by pinning it, it's, it's the best way to make sure you're gonna be doing this correctly. I can't tell you how many times I used to do this without pins and I just start sewing. And when I started sewing, by the time I got all the way to the end, the ends didn't line up. So I had to take out all the stitches and do it all over again. And you don't wanna have to do that. And a project like this is also a great project if you're gonna be practicing your sewing skills because it doesn't take that much sewing. However, it's just enough to make you not kind of go, go cuckoo <laughs> doing too much sewing because you know a lot of sewing can, can uh, be very tedious. However, 
This can be a fun thing to do while you're sitting down watching TV, or maybe you're sitting in the backyard under a tree, just passing the time go by for an hour or so, maybe less, depending on how quickly and how long you've been sewing. So there it is. It's all pinned up, ready to go. I'm going to use my needle and thread here. And the first thing I'm going to do is tie it off on the end here. I like to start at this bottom end. So let me, whoops, let me just get a knot. Pull on it, pull it through again. Let me try this one more time. I'm going to pinch it. There we go. Whoops, hold on. Let me try this. I'm having some technical difficulties. All right, try this one more time. There we go. Perfect. So let me tie this off and I'll show you some simple sewing techniques that'll make your puppet really strong if you're hand sewing. The type of stitch we're going to do today is what's called a whip stitch. And it's probably the simplest stitch that you can do because you're just kind of going in this spiraling motion all the way around. Now, the, the best thing to do is not to rush this. I see people that sometimes try to get this over with really quick and they do a really wide stitch. You know, you don't want to have like an inch between each stitch. That's too, that's too, um, too far apart. And the puppet's not going to look that nice. Um, however, if you are just starting, you can do it a little bit wider than normal. I'll do it a little wider than normal today. It'll help it go a little faster and it'll be fine for this. You know, if this is your first puppet you're making, that's a good way to practice. So mine's probably about, just about that much there probably about an eighth of an inch for each little stitch. Now, if I was doing a professional puppet that I was going to make sure I wanted it to last a long time, and especially if I was sewing it out of fleece, I would do even tinier stitches. Now, I like this fur because it's really long, which makes... It really fun to create a character, and we'll see why a little bit later once we start to going to some finishing techniques that uh, that make this character unique. However, you can use a much th uh, thinner fur that's not as long and create a different type of character. You could easily make this into a dog just by adding ears. And um, you could even use felt or fleece. Now, now that I got this kind of started, I'm going to give you some more sewing tips. One thing is this fur likes to kind of pop out. You want to make sure it's kind of inside the puppet there. Now, I'll give you a closer look. Here's what I'm doing. I'm taking my needle. And I'm going in one side about that far down straight through to the second piece and coming out. I'm always entering on the same side. See that? So that it's wrapping around it each and every time. So at, at this part of creating your puppet, you know, e even if you're using a different fabric, the technique is pretty much the same. Where we can really diversify what we're working on, it comes a little later once we're adding characteristics and making adding different features that make our character unique, such as the eyes. You can do a tongue if you want. Um... Some people like to make it into an animal. 
again, these are little uh, little fantasy characters inspired by a, a book I'm working on. That I call them Snoofs, and they're really funny little characters. But uh, but again, you could easily turn your Snoof into a uh, a dog just by adding a little floppy ears, which I can show you how to do that a little later. Make it into a little cat by adding little pointed ears. I've even seen people turn it into like a little bird. Look at that. And we are cruising. I'm going to try to really speed through this so we can move on to the next steps. However, in the meantime, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my last Maker Faire experience. The one that I went to was in Rochester, New York which um, from what I heard is actually the biggest Maker fair in New York State. And my goodness, was that a hoot. Uh, the, the director of that, or the organizer, was Dan Schneiderman. And what a nice guy he is, too. And actually, I'm going to be talking to him very soon. I, I have a Maker podcast that I uh, just started, too. It's called Maker Chat Live. And uh, he's going to be on it in probably just a couple weeks, and we're going to talk about what it takes to make a Maker Faire. But so far, we've talked to all sorts of different types of people, some other puppet artists. We talked to uh, Daryl Maloney, uh, who goes by the uh, Broken Nerd, who does a lot of 3D printing. And uh, we've talked to all sorts of different artists. Rashad Santiago, who is a ma special effects makeup artist, who won season six of Face Off. If you have watched Face Off on Sci-Fi, that's been a lot of fun. And it's just, the goal is to really uh, explore all different types of makers. Because one thing that I love about being a maker is, you know, sometimes you think you know everything with the type of art that you're making. But sometimes by learning a different art form or a different kind of make learning something from a different type of maker you can find things that you never would have uh, found in your own trade so and then you can take those what you've learned and apply it to your own thinking like even for me my background i used to do a lot of costume making and a lot of my costume making skills apply perfectly well to sewing puppets as well and especially not to mention if you make costumes and clothes for your puppets so that makes it much much easier for me as well <laughs> but even talking like to daryl about 3d printing you know it's kind of inspired me to get into 3d printing and um you know i haven't used too much 3d printing in my puppets but i'd like to it can be kind of handy for doing different type of mechanism work and sometimes I add cool little gadgets inside the puppets, like to make their eyes blink. I'm going to be doing a couple of videos on that on my YouTube channel coming very, very soon. Actually, my next big project I'm going to post is um, has a whole bunch of mechanisms in it. And it's and if you like Star Wars, you're going to like that video. So make sure you stay tuned. But uh, but for the virtually Maker Fair. It was such a good idea, especially during what's going on in the world now, to give us something to focus on, a distraction that we can all do from our homes and still be creative and making things. And make sure, if, if you're in here, to check out um, all the other events that are going on today. There's been events going on all day. Right now, it's I think it's what uh, considered the middle of the day for the events. They've been going all morning. And they'll be going all evening as well. And there's all types of different things to check out. So as I'm coming to the end of this part here, I'm going to knot it up as well. Let me pull these pins out. And let me tie a little knot here. Okay, now, like I said, since we cut this on the fold, it saves us a heap of time. However, we do just need to stit, do a couple stitches up here right by the nose. 
And you know what? Speaking of the nose, maybe that's something we can do a little different on this guy. Give him a, a, a goofy nose. When designing these characters, it's fun to choose the different features that they're going to have. And something that's also fun is choosing what features that they don't have. Because to be honest, I don't typically put a nose on my snoofs, especially because I like to use this long fur. And it kind of makes it seem like it has this long snout, which I think looks really funny and adds a lot of character, especially in the book. These characters like to sniff around and find little all sorts of different uh, goodies they can get their hands on. They love cupcakes. That's their favorite. So I'm just wrapping around this nose. almost there and then we're going to get on to the mouth plate now the mouth plate is a very important part of it and today we're going to be using red for the mouth plate because i like that it has pretty good contrast with the um uh, with the blue fat with the blue fur because in the past i've used black inside the mouth with a blue character and especially if the lighting isn't great, it's hard to tell where the mouth is because it looks just like a shadow. So by having a red mouth plate with a character that's this color helps it, gives it more contrast, makes it much easier to see, which makes a better uh, experience for the audience as well. All right, let me just knot this up. We got to the end there. And there we go. Get rid of that pin. Make sure you always check it for pins again. The worst thing you can do is accidentally leave a pin in there. That is not fun when you go to do the puppetry for it. So now we have our snoof uh, sewn together there. The next thing I'm going to need is that fabric for the mouth plate. And like I said, I'm going to be using red felt today. Now the next thing I need is the mouth pattern, which is this. There is a top and a bottom, but they are the same. So if you flip it backward, it's not a big deal. And watch what I'll do. I'll just carefully trace around it just like this. And be sure to mark your top center notch, your bottom center notch, and of course your sides. I like to even connect the sides you can use a ruler to do that as well. And then I go like that so that I don't accidentally cut off my notches. And then I'm going to come around. Just like this. Okay, there. Now what I'm going to do, and you know how I said the pins are important before? They're even more important when you go to sew in this mouth plate. You really want to make sure you line it up. So this top notch here needs to line up with that top seam. So what I'm going to do is line that up there. And then put a pin in it so that it doesn't slide away on me. And then I do the same thing on the bottom. I mark that notch with that seam right there. And I'll put another pin in it. And then lastly, those side seams there, or rather the side notches for the center of the mouth, line up with that notch that we extended in the beginning, if you remember that. And I'll pin that in on both sides. And see how that fur wants to sneak out on me? Make sure you tuck that in. You don't want to get that caught in, in the sewing. It can loosen up your stitches over time. Just like that. Okay? And now what you're going to do is just stitch around 
all the way like that. And I'm going to try to do that really quick since we've already learned the sewing techniques. But even though we've learned the sewing techniques toward the beginning of this video, it is a little bit trickier with the mouth because before we were sewing in, I'm sorry, it was more, it's a, it is a little trickier with the mouth. Before, when we, were, when we were sewing that belly, it was two flat pieces that go together perfectly. Now this, we're kind of, it's almost like, again, if you have any experience sewing clothing, it's like sewing in a sleeve. It's a little bit goofy. You have these unusual cylinder shape going into this flat edge. And uh, again, it takes a little bit of finesse, which is why you definitely want to use pins. And the, the skills you learn, though, in sewing puppets can be applied to so many other types of maker, um, different, uh, yeah, different alleys of, um, uh, of uh, arts and crafts and, and makers. Uh, another one that's similar, and, and we had a guest on the Maker Chat Live podcast, was uh, Kira Arts. And what she does is plush making, which is, I'm sure you can imagine, has a lot of similarities to puppet making, especially this, well, I should say this style of puppet making. Because if you're making marionettes, it can be a very different process. Well, actually, some, some marionettes are fabric. A lot of them are made out of wood or uh, different forms of paper mache, though. Plastic, wood, all types of thing. Casting. But if you do like puppetry a lot, we actually have another podcast as well, which is called Puppet Tears Podcast. But tears is spelled as in like a teardrop. It's kind of funny. A little bit of a pun there. A lot of puppeteers love puns. Um, and we interview all sorts of different puppeteers. We or interview uh, marionette artists, uh, shadow puppets, a lot of people that work on Sesame Street and with the Muppets. Actually, just yesterday, we were talking to uh, Martin Robinson, uh, who you might not know his name if you're not uh, involved with the puppetry world. However, everybody knows <laughs> some of the characters he does. He is the puppeteer behind, or I should say inside of, Snuffleupagus. And he also does Telemonster and is an artist in his own right as well with the shows that he creates. Uh, he just did this amazing Halloween show that he launched this past October, which was just, I mean, unfortunately, I, I, did, I didn't get a chance to actually see it since uh, I just had a daughter right around that age, th that time. But a lot of my friends went to see it, and they just said it was remarkable. And we were talking about, uh, on the podcast that we recorded yesterday, which will come out on Wednesday, um, we're talking about all types of different things that he's working on. In Sesame Street, the new show on Apple TV called Helpsters, who he plays Mr. Prim on that, which is a really fun show, too. And really just learning what it takes to be a puppeteer. All right, look at that. I'm just about halfway around that mouth plate. We're really cruising today. And then, then after this, we're going to be getting into the, um, the, the mouth plate support piece. The actual hard plate, because there's there's two plates that we use for the mouth, the fabric mouth plate, and then also the um, the stiffer mouth plate. Which, and like I was saying before, sometimes uh, they can be cut out of wood. These are some that I had laser cut out of wood. I got those from PuppetPelts.com. If you want to just pick up some, if you don't have wood cutting tools. But like I said before, they don't have to be wood. Some people use cardboard or craft foam. I don't really like to use cardboard and craft foam because they break down over time, especially if your hand gets a little sweaty 
or if your puppet gets wet, which is something uh, you'd want to avoid if you use those materials. That's why my favorite thing to use is recycled plastic, uh, whether it's from an old bin or even from things like a uh, laundry detergent bottle or an ice cream pail. Those are some really fun materials to use as well. And another thing I really love about th this pattern is the variety and diversity you can get with the characters just by changing tiny little things. Like just by using, even on the thumbnail for this video, I used a yellow fur and the character just looks so different. Uh, so changing the, the mouth plate color, the fur color, adding features whether it's little tufts of hair on the head which could be made from an old wig some other fabric maybe even some feathers all types of different materials that you have laying around i've, I've seen some one person even used boondoggle as hair which is kind of an interesting material because it has a lot of body to it and it can depending on how long it is it can kind of almost stand up on its own which makes it look kind of funny And then we'll also talk about different materials to use for the eyes. Personally, I like to make really strong eyes that are made from scraps of wood or um, those little doll knobs that they you can buy them at any craft store. I'll show you one of those in just a moment. We're just finishing up this bottom edge here, and then we're going to get right into the fun stuff. You know, the sewing part of, of a puppet in a lot of ways is like eating your vegetables, you know? You got to do it. <laughs> and you're, you're better off doing it that way, too. But we all like to get to the dessert. And that's what I think of when it comes to... Um, that's what I think of when, I, when it comes to uh, adding the different features and creating the characters. One thing I'm curious about, I see a lot of people in the comments here. Let me know if you've ever been to a Maker Fair before, or maybe if you have a subscription to Make Magazine. It's a really great magazine. I love having, having it myself. I ordered it myself for a while, but then my aunt ordered me a subscription for, for uh, as a gift. So now I have, have that coming in too. Makes a great gift whether you're going to give the gift to somebody or whether you're um, receiving it, it's a good thing to ask for, especially if you have a birthday coming up. You can really explore all different types of making and makers. All right, let me knot this up. Pull out that pin. <clears throat> there it is. Now we have, I'm not going to turn it inside out yet because I do want to glue the mouth plate on, but you can kind of see even inside out. It looks kind of funny. And you can tell that that is definitely a puppet. Okay. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this mouth plate pattern again, but I'm going to use it on my mouth plate material, which, like I said many times today, I'm going to be using this plastic lid today. And all I'm going to do is trace it just like I did before. Make sure, yet again, you mark your top and bottom and side notches. Okay. And then I am going to use a ruler this time because we are going to be cutting it in half. I just connect those two notches there. And I will cut on that line. Another thing I like about this, because like with wood, you'd need to use a saw. This plastic is thin enough 
to still cut with scissors, although it's strong enough to support the weight of the puppet inside when you're trying to operate it, which in my eyes kind of makes it the perfect material to use. And this is from one of those shoe bins. So even if you are buying this just to use as a mouth plate, those shoe bins are like 88 cents. And there's enough plastic to make at least eight or ten snoofs. I can get two out of the lid, two or three out of the sides of the bin, at least one on each side, and again another two or three from the bottom. So I cut that. Let me move this. Then I'm going to cut on the line here. I like to just slightly round off that edge so it's not poking me. I'm going to cut on the other side of this line, too, just to give it a little bit of breather room. And then take that edge. Nick that corner off. Boom. And there it is. We have a nice mouth plate for this puppet. Now, this might be not necessary, but I like to just give it a light sand because we are going to glue it down there. And some plastics don't really like glue that much. So just by roughing it up just a little bit makes me a little bit more confident that it'll stick. Just like that. That looks good to me. Now, you could just use hot glue. Uh, that's totally fine. Um, but for this, I, I like to use uh, usually like a spray glue if you have it. But I'm actually out of that today as well. So I'm just going to use some contact cement that I have. And uh, if you're doing this, make sure you do it in a well-ventilated area. I have my shop vent going and my windows open right now. So... I'm definitely in good shape. I'll put it on just like that. Does not take much at all. What's nice about using uh, the spray adhesive and even some contact cement rather than something like hot glue is this type, these types of glues can tend to be a little bit more flexible after they dry, where the hot glue can be a little bit stiff, uh, which can potentially allow you to get a little bit more expression out of your puppet by letting the mouth plate bend around a little bit. But even if it's stiff, it'll still work really well because a lot of puppets have stiff mouth, mouth plates. They, they'll use wood or something like that. So it's not a big problem. So I'm going to let that dry for one second. Let me get my, just so we're not sitting here, you know, watching paint dry. Let me just heat this up a little bit. And uh, I would recommend a blow dryer if you're not patient. This is technically a heat gun, but you got to be careful with a heat gun. If you hold it too close, too long, you know, it's designed to, um, to get much hotter than a hair blower. Hair dryer. Hair dryer would be much better to use in this case. Okay. Now let me just stick these bad boys on. I really want to line it up nicely. And if you can see, it's kind of overlapping a little bit because when you stitch it, sometimes you lose a, just a little bit of that thickness, but that's totally fine. The pattern's designed to do that. 
it also kind of creates a little bit of a lip on the character if you were using something like fleece. And there it is. Let me press it down. And now, let me flip it inside out and let's see what we have. Look at that. So now that fur is kind of all over. So watch, once you just kind of comb it out with your hand, you can start to really see that mouth plate. And it starts to take form as a puppet. And if you have a comb, you can brush it out a little bit too. Let me see, do I have mine here? No, that's okay. I'll just use my hand. Just kind of shaping the fur. If you comb out this fur, at least with this style fur that I have, it completely changes the texture. And what I like about the texture of this fur naturally is it's, it is kind of monstery. When you comb it out, it looks more like a, um, almost, almost, almost like hair rather than fur. But one thing I'm going to do quickly, just to make it a little bit easier to see, is I am going to trim a little bit of this fur here so it's easier to see the mouth and I don't have to worry about it getting tucked in. At this point, you know, this is this is all your own artistic um, decisions you're making as far as what you want it to look like. Because if you want it to be crazy like that and have all that hair around the mouth, that's totally okay. That's one way to do it. Generally, I like to leave it longer on the body and longer on the back of the head. But I like to trim it a little shorter around the nose sometimes because it um, helps it to see the eyes once we put eyes on. If you put eyes on. Some people like to not even put eyes on these characters because it's kind of like... Uh, you know, it kind of makes it goofy. You can just put a hat on it. Some characters are like that. Yeah, especially if you look at the fraggles. Uh, Bobo Fraggle. He doesn't really have eyes. He just has a hat on. It's another way to think of things. And actually, like I was saying before, too, a lot of times I like to leave the nose fur longer so then it looks like he's got a long snout like that. But today, actually, I think I'm going to trim it down. Make those eyes easier to see once we get them on. There it is. So I think I'll, that'll be enough grooming for today on this little guy. There. Now, when you go to adding eyes on your puppet, there are so many different choices that you can do. My favorite with puppets like this is to use these. These wooden balls here. And the way they come, they're flat on the bottom. And they have those little holes there. Okay? You can get these at any craft store. Some places call them doll heads. Some people call them wooden knobs, as in like a little knob for a drawer. So depending on what they call them. But you can use really anything you want. You can use little half spheres that you can cast. I have videos on my channel on how to make eyes like this. And actually, that's what I did for this snoof over here. Let me put this guy on quick so you can see him up close. 
he's got those half round eyes, which is fun because then when I since there's no foam in his head, I can really change his expression like that, which is really fun. So, but today I am going to use those uh, round eyes. And I like, since they look like wood, I like to paint them first. And before uh, we started this, I did quickly spray paint a bunch of sets of eyes. So we have these ready to go. Now, if you're going to use these half round eyes that I was showing you before, they're pretty simple to attach. You just put glue on the back and then you stick it on. And then it stick, sticks onto the fabric like I showed you. However, with these ones, um, if you glue them on, they'll kind of flop around, almost like Cookie Monster eyes, which is... Um, which can be funny if you're going for that, but generally I'm not. So I put a, a bracket in the bottom. And what I like to use for that, you can use wood, but sometimes I'm afraid that the wood might crack for the eyes. So I like to use some PVC pipe. And then what I do is I do one cut on the side here, use my heat gun and I flatten it out. And then once it's flat, it looks like this. Okay, and I cut off a little piece. Then what I do is this. I put the two eyes where I want them. Sometimes I want them further apart. Sometimes I want them closer together. Today, I'll do it closer together. And then what I do is I take a pencil. Today, I'll use a Sharpie so you can see it better. And I trace around the eyes like this. Whoops, try not to move them. Okay. And then I find the center holes there, and I see my holes right there. And I want to make sure I mark about where that is on there, okay? It's a little squiggly there, so let me kind of, I usually go back over it again with a ruler, smooth it out. <laughs> Just like that. And then, since this is plastic, I do usually use a Dremel or usually actually a bandsaw, I cut it out and then drill two holes. And then it looks like this. And I have this nice little bracket that I can put two screws into like this, which really secures these eyes on really well once it's screwed in. Those eyes will not go anywhere then. So, let's uh, decide where we want to put them. Let me take this bracket and kind of decide. I think I'm going to put this guy's eyes really close to his head, right about there. And actually, I'm going to turn him inside out quick. That might make it easier. Depending on the fabric and the design, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's not. So, I'm going to put them right. There are the eyes. So let me put a little Sharpie mark there, a little Sharpie mark there. That looks pretty even. Maybe it's a little bit off center. Let me scoot it over. <laughs> I think I got a little piece of fur in my mouth. Hold on. All right. Whew. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little scissors, cut a little notch out there. Okay, perfect. Then what I'll do is I'll put the screw in like that. And I'll feed them through. Be careful when you reach back in. Depending on what kind of screw you're using, it might be a little bit sharp. <laughs> I'm going to carefully turn it back inside out. I'm not going to turn it inside out all the way because I want to be able to screw, screw it in easy. There it is. There's my little screw heads. And again, you don't have to use a screw method. I just think it, it, it really lasts a long time. And when I make my puppets, I like to make them in a way that they last a very long time. So yeah, let me put that on. 
And depending on what kind of screwdriver you have, you can do it like that. I'm just going to save a little time because we're running low on time here. I'm going to screw it in like this. There's one. Make sure they're not loose. This other one's a little bit loose. Let me give it one more little torque. All right. Whoops, hold on. There we go. Then look at that. That's pretty cute, isn't it? Now that we have our puppet looking like this, let me actually let me trim just a little bit more inside that mouth. And then we're going to put some pupils on. And then I think we may just call it a day. And this will be one fun little maker project to pass the time by, especially if maybe if you're feeling a little lonely, you need a friend. What better thing to do than to make your own friends? Literally make friends. Make them out of fabric. All right. So I like that. So um, now for pupils, there's so many things you can do. Some people I see, they just even just use a Sharpie and draw them on. Okay. Uh, you can do some fun things too. You could do even like a like a, a hypnotized eye, like a swirl. That would be really fun to do with a Sharpie. You can use little pieces of fabric, stick it on. Some people like to use Velcro dots and use that. That works well as well. Uh, my favorite thing to use is I get them at the craft store when I go to buy the wooden balls. And I, I like to use these. These are little tiny little bead eyes that are flat on one end. Okay. And they come in all different sizes. These ones are six millimeter. So I'm going to take two of them out. I already have one out there. Let me get the other one. Do, 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 do. There it is. Now, let me decide where to put them. Hmm. Doesn't that look funny? Whoops, that doesn't look good. His eyes are looking at each other. That's okay. Let me get a little, I'll put a little pencil dot there so I can see where exactly where I want to have it. <laughs> what should we name this guy? Put some names in the comments. That looks, I think that looks good. Let me see. That's a nice thing about having it on the screw as well. I can still kind of position the pupils even after they're attached, at least back and forth. So that looks good, those little pencil dots. Let me use just a little bit of this super glue. It's like regular glue, except for it's super. Whoops, hold on. This one's not open yet. Let me get my open one. There it is. Just a little tiny dot there, a little tiny dot there. And then, whoop. it's hard to grab these little uh, tiny eyes. Don't glue yourself to your puppet. Look at that. Now you can just wait, let it dry. I have this accelerant that when you spray it, it makes the glue dry immediately, which is handy in cases like this. So I see some names here. I see the name Muffler. People like the name Muffler. That look sounds funny. I kind of like that for a, a puppet name. Conan, Marco, all these different names. Let me see here. <clears throat> Let me switch the camera up. 
All right. Well, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, we have a little snoof here. But you know what? We still have two minutes or so. So I just want to do one more tiny little thing, and then I'll do a quick little puppet demo, and then we're going to call it a day. And here's what we're going to do is I mentioned before, and I almost forgot about it, is I wanted to add these little feathers to the head, which can make the puppet look really funny. Okay. And these ostrich feathers, I found these at a garage sale. So I'm going to use a couple of these. I'm going to use a couple of little blue ones. But those blue ones are going to blend in with the fur a lot, which I kind of want it to a little bit, but not completely. So I'm also going to add in a couple black ones. And for a little bit more contrast, I'm going to add just a couple little pink feathers. And then we'll call that a call that a day. One thing that's really nice about using little pieces of uh, longer pieces of something for the hair, whether it's the boondoggle, whether it's the uh, feathers, whether it's you know strings, is you get what we call in the business sympathetic movement. And what's nice about that, or what that is, is that's movement that the puppet does without you having to puppeteer it. Even if this puppet was, you know, standing, sitting on the counter, if there's a slight little breeze or if someone walks by, these feathers would move, which just kind of adds a little bit more life to your puppets. That even So like if the puppet's breathing, you know, not only is it slightly moving up and down, but then also what's going to happen is um, it's going to, these feathers will move around. And here's what I like to do. I'm going to give them just a little bit of feather right here. I'll put a little glue into this fur. Okay, that should be good. Doesn't take a lot. Stick it in right here. And then just like that, now we do officially have our little snoof is done. Let me zoom in so we can get a little bit more of a goofy a goofy look on. Here he is. Hi there, my name is Muffler. How you guys doing? <gasps> look at that puppet doesn't look so good. <gasps> He's shocked. He's shocked that we made a whole puppet in just an hour. Can you believe it? No, I can't believe it, Muffler. Wow. Well, this was a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, making a quick little puppet today. I can't wait to see your puppets. Make sure you post them on Instagram. You guys can post them on Instagram. I would love to see them. Just uh, uh, tag me. It's at Adam Krutinger. And if you're making it during this Maker Fair, the virtual Maker Fair, make sure you tag Maker Fair as well. Tag uh, Maker Fair and Make Magazine because I'm sure they would love to see the amazing puppets that you guys are making. Well, without any further ado, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this fun little puppet project. If you want to see more puppet building, make sure you check out this channel. And, and oh, hopefully we'll be doing more collaborations with uh, Maker Fair and Maker Magazine in the future. So definitely stay tuned. Thanks, guys. And we'll see you next time.